to you. Somebody may not have tell you this, but every, I say most, most stores are on a three-day delivery um, schedule. Um, Non-perishable items might be a little bit longer, but perishable item, you're looking at a three-day minimum um, um, cycle. So think about this. If a truck don't deliver to a store, you have three days, maybe, maybe, maybe a little bit more before things start to disappear from the shelf. Now, when you're looking at uh, non-perishable commodity like canned goods and such, don't forget there's an expiration date that is for the um, su uh, supplier and um, the person who's selling it. It have to sell that item by a certain time. So even though it might be a three, two to three years um, expiration on that um, um, product itself, remember it has to be sold so that company can make money. So now, when you look at all of this, right, you have to follow the flow of logistic and see where things are coming from. So. A manufacturer build or create or process a, a material, right? From food or whatever. It's just let's just take food for example. Um, a farmer grow the crop, harvest the crop, get the crop, and and also distribute it to whomever purchases from them, from them, right? Now these trucks that's on the road, if if they don't make their delivery or there's a problem. And they, they get stopped or the flow of these trucks cannot make it to the distribution hub for it can be distributed out to the stores or um, that you go and buy these product from. You are out of luck. So logistics is very important. Anything that get disrupted in that flow, that's you not getting product. So... You might say, well, how does that impact me and what's the big deal? So let's just say this. If you want to control a population, right, um, you have to do a lot of things. One, you control the food, you control the, the uh, people uh, compliance, and you control people um, um, mindset and morality, right? So... Think about that. The reason I'm saying this is because I want to bring forth to you about this is this is old news to some people, but there is about let me see. I want to make sure I get this correct. Twenty six so far and counting uh, food processing plants that are, that mysteriously getting cash on fire, um, liberally cash on fire or uh, coordinated. I don't know, but the fact is that the the continuous of increase of processing plants being caught, catch on fire is something that's highlights mysterious. Now you may not hear it in these major news network reporting on it. Of course, that's going to create chaos and panic. So when you do your own research, you see what I'm talking about. Um, now, if you have food processing plants. Um, being destroyed I want you to put you on your thinking cap and say well we just had an issue with truckers in Canada and we have current issues with um, train conductors and here in America now I mean going on strike basically look into that you see what I'm talking about and we see a big um, slowdown of um, product being hold at the um, port during the during the beginning of the uh, war and also um, the Ukraine war and Russia and we saw the big um, how can I say sanction place on import from you know Russia and also other places we see all these things happening and all that is impacting our food. And if you really think about it, if that continue or increase, that's going to cause what? A food shortage. 
And a lot of us don't want to hear that. And a lot of us said, well, we live here in America. That, that cannot happen. Let me be the first one to tell you. I am from Haiti, so I have seen real poverty. Um, not where you can go and pick up and go to a, and check in a, a homeless shelter and get a warm meal and a place to sleep. I'm talking about some rural area that i seen and, you know, growing up as a child, I've seen real poverty. Here, equivalent to poverty is good living, not to mark what um, people who are poor and those who are dealing with homelessness. But the thing is, is that other third world country have it worse. Here in America, we have it good. Your lowest to other places is good living. Trust me. Trust me, you don't have to experience to understand where I'm coming from. Just take my word for it. Or find someone who come from a third world country or considered to be a third world country, and they'll tell you for themselves. So getting back to the main thing, if our food is being attacked, and and a lot of us don't see it and not making preparation for it, I really don't know what to tell you. Because if you cannot, provide food for yourself or you cannot go and buy food for yourself that going to leave you to a mental state of mind that's going to cause you to do things that you do not want to do compromising on your morals and a starving person will do a lot trust me and and the thing is is that people are not thinking about these things because we are so distracted with so much Things that's happening. Perfect example during uh, the time of where Will Smith, Will Smith slapped, um, what is his name? Doing that whole commotion thing. People got distracted. They focused on that while fire was being put, I mean, with fire uh, being put out on these food processing plants, and but no major news outlet were reporting on it. So you can see how quickly we can be distracted. And I don't want you to be distracted. I want you to focus on what's going on around you. And and you can see how distracted we are because recently I'm noticing a difference with changes being made. The USDA whom I once trust have lost that from me because we... If you, if you really want to see what's going on, look into your food. Now, your food is being attacked by, by logistics, which is the way it's getting to you. Your food is being attacked by how it's being processed. And these plants, once they get the raw material, which is the food, and then they create whatever they need to create or process it f for it to get to your grocery store so you can get it on your table and eat. We see that being under attack. And not only that... Um, it's being attacked when you make the purchase. And what I mean by that is that if you ever look at a food label, it's, you can often see these two things labeled on there. Um, artificial flavor um, and natural flavor. And what if I tell you that the USDA have approved for these things to exist and they are causing harm to you? Yes, it's a small amount, but think about it. Any small amount of anything can cause harm. Now, perfect example I can give you is that if I tell you, well, this is poison. Um, if you drink this, you're going to die. You're not going to take it. Most people are not going to do that. But if I tell you, hey, I'm just going to put a little bit of poison in your uh, drink. Um, you can drink it. You're not going to die. Um, yeah, you may not die instantly versus what is potent, but diluted um, poison is still poison. It's just like saying, oh, um, I'm not going to drink poop water, but someone dropping a, 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 drop a small amount in your clean water. You're not going to drink that. I know that's an extreme example, but I just want to paint the picture and see for you to see how bad this is. So our food is under attack in many ways, and you can see it, and I have shared so far with you, but the whole... Um, process is a, itself it's, it's kind of tough for, for most people to accept in myself included now if you look at the definition of natural flavor which most people have staying away from artificial flavor because we know it's not good for us it's, it's 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 created in a lab somewhere just to mimic the actual flavor if you want strawberry why not 
get the actual strawberry, but they will create a strawberry flavor, which is full of different chemical, which can harm you over time. Now, the USDA have approved um, this so-called. Uh, I'm doing air quote because it's 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 nonsense. Natural flavor. Most people will read that and say, "Oh, natural flavor." When you look at those two words, okay, it's real. But if I read the re- definition for natural flavor, natural flavor is a government regulation defined natural flavor has um, those that uh, div- um, div- divide their aroma or flavor uh, chemically chemical from plant or animal source, including fruit, meat, fish, spices, herbs, roots, leaves, buds, and barks that are distilled, fermented, or otherwise manipulated in a lab. So despite all the list of things that's, that sound and that is natural, um, at the end, you can see that it's a manipulated in the lab. So regardless, it's coming from a natural resource. It's being manipulated and changed. So when you have something mechanically changed um, in a lab, often you enhance it and, and, and you change its, how can I say, its structure or its natural state. And most of the time when you change something like that, it could be good or bad. And if you're looking at it from my point of view, the company will want to make profit versus caring about the expense. Uh, and, and either they're going to pass that to you or a lot of them cut corners and really like don't care about it. So anything that's being manipulated, guess what? There's a high chance that it may not be in your favor. Just think about that. Um, now, another thing, too, I want to uh, tackle is... Uh, processed food. Processed food get a bad connotation, but let me just say this. Every food that you eat is processed, whether it's natural or artificial, because you're looking at the key word, which is processed. When you cook, you're processing the food. But I want you to think about this and dig, dig a little bit deeper and really think about this part, for example. Uh, what is processed food? That's the question you would, should ask yourself. Now, according to um, Eat Right, if you search on Google, is this is what it says. It says, processed food include food that has been cooked, canned, frozen, packaged, or changed in nutritional um, composition with uh, fortifying, preserving, uh, preserving or preparing in different ways. Anytime we cook, bake, or prepare food, we are processing food. Like I said earlier, that is true. Now, the thing that you have to focus on and to really see where you are being attacked is the filler from these companies. So if you process your own food, yeah. You know it's good. You know it's healthy and it's okay to eat. But these main main thing that you have to focus is with these company. When these company processing these food, they have what you call fillers in these food. And let's let me um, define filler for you. Filler of food uh, food fillers or addi- additives that help bulk up the weight of the food with less expensive ingredient, which help keep the price down fillers are mainly found in meat processing industry and food uh process uh, i'm sorry process uh, meat like hamburger and sausage are the best candidates to contain fillers now not only these things if you ever look at certain product that you buy from most grocery stores um it may not list list it but you have to really read the ingredient and look those look those ingredient ingredient up and figure out are these nutritionists for your body if they're not you might want to consider um perfect example did you know that certain food coloring or food coloring coloring overall is not good for you and especially for young um young adults and also kids at their um, growing stage, toddlers and such. And that's where we find a lot of these um, 
food coloring because of course they have to make it look tasting and appealing for kids to eat and what i'm talking about is red 40 yellow six and there's a few more but those are like the main one and there has been clinical studies showing that those food coloring can lead to a lot of um i say mental issues for kids and i will leave that up to you to do your own research and find out so if you have kids you might want to look into that and really really look into it and make a decision for yourself now our food is being attacked in different places in different ways but one thing i can end this is by saying this do your research a lot has been covered from how and, and where your food is coming from which is through logistic and also we talk about the attacks on different food processing plants now if your food process processing plants are under attack and we cannot process the food from the farmers to create and deliver um, the food that we like to eat on a daily basis that will create a food shortage and potential um, problem for a lot of us um, so that means you need to learn how to farm and grow your own crop if you can and if you have the land for it and i would say there should be no excuse Start learn learn to grow some herbs on your balcony and learn how to grow some um, staple um, um, food for yourself like potatoes, tomatoes, uh, greens and such. You know what I'm saying? Learn how to do that and grow some herbs that can help you um, and use them as medicine. And also we talked about understanding between artificial and natural flavor. Those things are important because if you don't, focus on these things and know what's in your food remember you are what you 